No food, no shakes, no shortcuts. I went zero calorie for five days and what happened even shocked me. This wasn't just about fat loss. It hit my sleep, my energy, and my mind. And my cravings disappeared. But it wasn't all smooth. I'll show you what no one tells you about long fasts. Pay attention to the full journey, especially the turning point on day three. That's when it got real. You see, most people think fasting is just about skipping breakfast. But this was zero food, just water, unflavored electrolytes, minerals for five straight days. No coffee, no shakes, no bone broth, no fat bombs, just water. Why did I do this? Because I wanted to see what really happens when you give your body no external fuel, when you flip that metabolic switch from sugar burning to fat burning. And what I found was life-changing. I didn't do this for aesthetics or weight loss. I did this to heal, to reset, to get clarity, physical, mentally, and spiritually. So allow me to go through this timeline of a five-day fast and what happened inside of my body. The first 14 hours, here's what I noticed. A process called energy diversion took place and my focus surged. By hour 14, I hadn't eaten since the night before and something wild happened. Instead of fatigue, I actually felt sharper. This is what researchers and myself call energy diversion. You see, at the 14-hour mark, I've completed digestion. So at this point, the energy, the bandwidth, the blood flow that is used for digestion, there's a lot of energy used for digestion, is now complete. So now I have this energy being diverted to the brain, to my organs, for healing and focus. You see, it takes a lot of energy to digest food. When that process is complete, you have all this energy to use for other areas in your body. I wasn't thinking about food anymore. I was thinking more clearly than ever. See, we don't realize how much energy it takes to process food until we complete digestion and move into a fast. 17 hours into this fast, a process called autophagy kicked in. Autophagy is the body's built-in cellular cleaning system. Old proteins, damaged mitochondria, senescent cells are all being recycled for parts. Human studies from Yoshinori Usimi, who's a Nobel Prize winning researcher, show that fasting triggers this self-cleaning mechanism, which has been shown to extend lifespan and protect against neurodegenerative conditions. This is cellular house cleaning. The body is so smart that when there's not food energy coming in, it activates this process to look for energy. And it gets that energy from damaged cells. It's like Pac-Man going within the cells, cleaning out the junk, turning mitochondria and cells that are not burning fat and producing energy efficiently, fixing that so it burns fat and produces energy now more efficiently. You see, the body doesn't know about Uber Eats or DoorDash. It doesn't know about your refrigerator stock full of food. It automatically goes through this process because it's hardwired for the old school. And the number one priority for the human body is survival. The body doesn't know that I'm doing this long fast to get all these benefits. It thinks I'm going through a famine. So it turns on these amazing processes and autophagy is one of them to get energy from damaged cells. And all this is happening with me just living my day-to-day -day life. 20 hours into this fast, a switch turned on to use fat for fuel. See at the 20 hour mark, my sugar reserves called my glycogen stores, where we all store Stored calories in the liver and muscle cells are now depleted. So my body had no choice but to use stored fat for energy, belly fat, visceral fat. This is where the body breaks down fat. Those fatty acids are sent to the liver and the liver produces ketones. This is called ketogenesis, the birth of ketones. One of those ketones is called beta-hydroxybutyrate, which has the ability, this ketone body, to cross the blood-brain barrier and fuel the brain and the mitochondria within the brain. Human trials show that just fasting for 20 to 24 hours increases circulating ketones by up to 300% according to a nature metabolism study in 2021. Ketones aren't just fuel. They're actually signaling molecules that lower inflammation, create healthier mitochondria, and support brain function. That's when my cravings disappeared. You see, my brain was running on a rocket fuel called ketones. 24 hours into this fast, there was a growth hormone surge. Studies show that when you go without food for 24 hours, and this is a study from the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, they saw a 2,000% increase in human growth hormone in men and a 1,300% increase in human growth hormone in women. Human growth hormone is fat burning, anti-aging, muscle building. Why is this important? Where so many people think, and even some health experts say, when you fast, you're gonna lose muscle, your body's gonna eat muscle. 
Well, the opposite is true. Your body actually becomes more efficient at protecting muscle by raising human growth hormone. This is where I realized fasting isn't starvation. It's a strategic stress, a metabolic reset. 30 hours into this fast, I noticed something pretty cool. It was like a spiritual experience. That's because of a surge in something called brain-derived neurotropic factor, BDNF. BDNF has been called miracle grow for the brain, brain fertilizer. It actually helps neurons connect better to other neurons, and you actually, I felt, euphoric. Peaceful, yet focused. Creative, yet calm. A 2014 study, a human trial from the Journal of Molecular Neuroscience, found that intermittent fasting boosts BDNF levels by over 50%. So I felt this deep creative pull, like my brain was rewiring itself. No noise, no distraction, just clarity. It's also when fasting becomes spiritual. You start turning inward. Thoughts slow down. Gratitude heightens. You feel connected. It's no coincidence that every major religion practices some form of fasting. I even remember at this point of the fast, my fiance, which was my girlfriend at the time of this fast, was telling me things like, hey, how come you're not talking to me that much? How come you're, you're more introverted? Because I was with my thoughts, I was present, I was focused, and I was just speaking less because I was in this spiritual experience. Now, 48 hours into the fast, I experienced a dopamine reset. By 48 hours, food cravings, even emotional ones vanished. My relationship with food started to reset. Why? Because fasting restores dopamine sensitivity. Constant snacking, scrolling on your phone, and stimulation blunt your dopamine receptors, which means you're less happy, you're less grateful, you're looking for more dopamine hits. It's kind of like insulin resistance, but it's also dopamine resistance. But when you fast, you reset them. Researchers at Yale University found that fasting mobilizes D2 receptor site sensitivity. These are receptor sites in the brain that bind to dopamine. This increases baseline satisfaction and motivation. I didn't realize how overstimulated I had been until this moment. Now simple things like water, a walk, music, felt amazing again. 60 hours in, I felt a healing pain. This is where things got a little rough for me and it might happen to you as well. See at the 60 hour mark, I hit a challenge, low back pain. I was getting this pulsating lower back pain and I was thinking, what is happening here? I know in the past I had frequent lower back injuries and my first thought was, oh, this is uncomfortable. But then I thought the body's very smart. It always wants to heal, always wants to survive. So it wasn't actually a bad sign, it was a healing sign. During deep autophagy, which is again, that cellular cleanup process, your body will target old injury sites where damaged cells linger. Researchers at the University of Southern California found that extended fasting triggers stem cell regeneration and immune repair. So you, you might experience pain in an area that you had older injuries. Maybe it's knee pain, neck pain, joint pain, or low back pain like myself. This isn't an issue, it is healing. Your body is so smart, it's healing that area. After a few hours, the pain went away, the healing was done. Uncomfortable, yes but deeply meaningful and purposeful. 72 hours into this fast, there was an entire immune system reboot. My ketones were well over 3.0, and I was testing that with a blood finger prick called a keto mojo, and I'll explain more about that later. And what we have found through research in 2014 from Dr. Walter Longo is that when you complete a 72 hour fast, your entire immune system regenerates. It does this by clearing out damaged white blood cells and stimulating new white blood cells from stem cells. So if you deal with autoimmunity, inflammation, or chronic fatigue, this stage is gold for you. I felt calm, centered, and clean, physically and mentally. This is where fasting stops being a diet and becomes medicine. At the 90 hour mark, I hit the ultimate goal here, which was the one-to-one -one autophagy ratio. Research shows that if you could hit a one-to-one -one glucose to ketones ratio, you're hitting maximum autophagy, maximum cellular cleanup and repair. As a matter of fact, I interviewed Dr. Thomas Seafried on my Metabolic Freedom podcast in the past. He's a world-renowned cancer researcher, and he has seen cancer cells, tumor cells, literally shrink before his eyes when his patients achieved this one-to-one -one ratio of glucose and ketones. So I tested this by measuring my blood glucose and blood ketones throughout the fast. 
And here's how you know when you hit that one-to-one -one ratio of max autophagy. You get your blood glucose. Write that number down. It's gonna give you the US units, which is milligrams per deciliters. And you divide that number by 18. And then you measure your blood ketones, which gives you the units in millimoles per liter. And if your ratio is one-to-one -one or higher, you've hit max autophagy. So I'll give you an example of how this works. So during this fast, about 90 hours in, I measured my blood glucose and it was 59 milligrams per deciliters. Now to the average person, you might think that's hypoglycemic. However, my ketones were surging and my body was running off of fat for fuel. So I took the 59, divided it by 18, which gave me 3.2. Then I measured my ketones and my ketones were actually over 3.2. They were at 4.2. One, that is higher than a one-to-one -one ratio. You see, if my ketones were at least 3.2 or higher, I've hit max autophagy and I got it by day 90. This is where the metabolic reboot truly happens. Inflammation drops, damaged mitochondria are recycled. Your body becomes a self-repairing machine. Emotionally, I felt detached from hunger, time, and even stress. It was like meditation on a cellular level. I stayed in this max autophagy until I broke the fast at the five day mark, which is 120 hours without food. But it, it didn't end there because how I broke this fast and how you break a block fast, a block fast is a fast that's three days or longer, in this case, five days. How you break the fast is just as important as the fast itself. If you do it wrong, you could undo a lot of the benefits you achieved during your five day fast. Do it right and you amplify those benefits. So here's how I broke the fast. This is the structure that I would recommend you follow if you go for a five day fast. First, what not to eat. See, what happens during a five day fast is your digestive enzymes are low. They're limited because your body isn't producing them to digest food. You also have bacteria, good and bad bacteria that have been starved down and things like candida, other bacteria overgrowth have been starved down because you haven't fed it with food. So jumping back into a heavy meal to break the fast can cause something called a refeeding syndrome, bloating or gut distress, or even more serious issues can occur. So you want to avoid eating the following foods on day one of breaking the fast. You don't want meat. You don't want raw vegetables and you don't, you don't want to eat any grains of any kind. And of course, you don't want to eat processed carbohydrates. You actually want to keep your total protein under 20 grams on that day one you break the fast. That's crucial. Too much protein can spike mTOR, this anabolic growth phase, which shuts down autophagy and the stem cell surge you're going to get as you break the fast. We wanna stay in that healing window just a little bit longer. So the day one protocol that I followed is to go low and slow. Here's what I apply to my Fat Loss Academy students. When they break the fast, this is what I teach them to do. If you weigh 200 pounds or less, on that day you break your fast, you wanna to aim to consume 500 to 800 calories total. If you weigh over 200 pounds, keep it between 800 and 1,000 calories total. This is the only time I'll tell you to count calories because it helps you stay within the healing zone. So here's what I allowed on day one as I broke this fast. I had a keto shake, which was light, low protein. I had berries, olives, olive oil. I had avocados. I had cooked eggs, lightly cooked eggs in butter, cooked sweet potato, and small amounts of fermented veggies like kimchi or sauerkraut. I went very slow with that to refeed the good bacteria in my gut with these prebiotic foods. On this day, you could bring back your supplements if you want. I sure did. Your system can now handle them again. Now, day two is also a protocol here where you're building back digestion. So you keep the calories the same. You still keep your protein under 20 grams or less for that day to let autophagy do its thing. And now you can add in new foods like raw nuts and seeds, macadamia nuts, peely nuts, pecans, walnuts, those are fine. Raw cheese is fine. Coffee, yep, you could finally bring it back in. And healthy fats like olive oil, ghee, avocado oil. You continue fasting for 16, 18 hours on that day, keeping those calories under that limit within a four to six hour eating window. By day three, you're back to normal eating. At this point, your digestion is ready to eat your regular whole foods again, including clean animal proteins. So keep it anti-inflammatory as always. Grass-fed meats, wild-caught small fatty fish, cooked veggies, healthy fats. You'll notice something incredible. Food tastes different. Your palate resets. Your relationship with hunger changes. And if you've done it right, you'll feel light, energized, clear, and deeply healed. Why does this work? Well, during your five-day fast, your body killed off 
old damaged cells. When you refeed correctly, your body uses those brand new stem cells to rebuild stronger and younger. Now, a few notes before you try this, and then I'll get to your questions you submitted here. Number one, always consult your doctor, especially if you're on medication or have underlying conditions. Number two, prepare for the fast with two to three days of clean eating, higher fat, lower carbohydrates to ease into ketosis. Number three, stay hydrated throughout the fast with high quality water, electrolytes, potassium, magnesium, minerals. Number four, during your fast, don't train, don't exercise. Light walking and stretching is great and resting is important. You don't wanna use energy to crush a workout, you wanna use energy during a fast like this for healing. Now, before I get to your questions here that I will address that you probably have, I wanna offer you another resource to add on top of what you just learned today. It's, it's called my Keto Egg Fast Protocol. If you've tried everything to lose the last 10 pounds, and nothing is working, stop what you're doing. This simple egg-based protocol has helped thousands torch fat, cut cravings, and drop up to 10 pounds in seven days. No starvation, no tracking, no BS. It works by hacking your metabolism using eggs, healthy fats, and strategic intermittent fasting to put your body in a deep fat burning mode. This is metabolic warfare and it's free. Click the first link in the description box below or if you're watching on YouTube, scan the QR code to download your free guide right now. You're just seven days from seeing real change in the mirror. You could follow this egg fast protocol before you do this long five-day fast or after you do the fast, either way works. Now let's get to your questions. Can I drink black coffee, tea, electrolytes during a five-day water fast or does that break the fast? Electrolytes, if unflavored, are fine. I would avoid flavored electrolytes. Tea, if it's also unsweetened herbal tea, that's fine. Coffee for some people could raise glucose. If you're gonna do a five-day fast, I would avoid coffee just to make sure you're not pushing your innate intelligence any direction, you're letting it do its thing. Now, if you feel like you can't do a five-day fast without your coffee, you'll go crazy, then have your coffee during the fast, you'll still get a lot of benefits. How often can someone safely do a five-day water fast? Once a year, twice or more? A good general protocol, one that I follow, is once per year. Will I lose muscle during a five-day fast and how can I minimize that? Typically, no. Your body's gonna raise human growth hormone to preserve muscle. If you do some of that prep work before the five-day fast, you're gonna feel great, you're gonna preserve muscle, you're gonna be golden. How do women adjust this fast around their menstrual cycle? Okay, so if you're a menstruating woman, you don't want to do this five-day fast or much fasting the week before your menstrual cycle. That is the worst time to do this. The best time to do this fast is the week of your menstrual cycle, your bleed week. That's when hormones are low, fasting is high. Always remember that. When hormones are low, progesterone, estrogen, which is naturally gonna happen during your bleed week when you're menstruating, you could do a fast. You could do a five-day fast. That's the best time to do it. The week before your menstrual bleed, is the week you do not want to do something like this. Is there a difference between a five-day water fast and a five-day bone broth fast in terms of healing and autophagy? There is. There are benefits to doing this with bone broth. This is called a partial fast, meaning you'll get partial benefits and results. If you really want to maximize the benefits and get the most benefits here, water only is the way to go. Hopefully this inspires you to do a five-day block fast. I hope you, you do it and you heal. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I'll see you on the next episode. And if you love this episode and want to learn more about how I stay lean year-round, 14% body fat, when I used to be obese for a very long time, I put together the foods that I eat, the foods that I avoid, a simple thing. It's not what you think. And I put it together in a recent lesson. So here's a clip from that lesson. Then click the video on the screen and I'll see you in that next video. Okay, let's start right here. This is the food that changed everything. What I started to do was actually eat more fat to lose fat, but it had to be the right healthy fats. So many people think fat makes you fat. That can be true if it's inflammatory fats, but there's a set of anti-inflammatory 